Welcome everyone. I'd like to say hello and greet you from Trinity Lutheran Church in Madison. Uh, my name is Dirk Heckmeyer, and uh, today is the fifth Sunday of Easter and Mother's Day. So um, thank you so much for being a mother, for being a significant woman in our lives because mothers make a big difference. They are like God, right? They are providing um, all the resources that we need to feel secure. Um, if you join us on television or on YouTube or Facebook or on radio, you may take out your Bibles and there are four Bible passages that we are going to cover. Acts 7, Acts 7, Psalm 31, 1 Peter chapter 2, and the gospel comes from John 14. John 14. Let us start with a gathering hymn, A Mighty Fortress, is our God, number 504. We are going to sing verses 1 and 2. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For Jesus lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today comes to us from the book of Acts, the seventh chapter, verses 55 through 60. Stephen was one of the seven men chosen by the apostles to serve tables so that the apostles would be free to serve the word. Stephen does more than distribute food, however. For his preaching of God's word, he becomes the first martyr of the faith. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of God, man, standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. 
Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of the young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a very loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today is Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5, and then verses 15 through 16. Our second reading comes today from the book of Peter, from 1 Peter, the second chapter, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have testified that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and the like living stone. Let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the heavy, very head of the cornerstone, and the stone that makes him stumble, and the rock that makes them fall. They stumble become, because they disobey the word as they are destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had no, had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. We are going to sing the Lenten, no, the, the Gospel Acclamation, which is uh, number 174. It's called the Celtic Alleluia.
Gospel from today is taken from John chapter 14. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself. So that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. The Gospel of the Lord. God's grace and peace to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today's scripture readings confront us with very conflicting messages. Conflicting messages about what a Christian life looks like. Before I dwell on that, let me ask you, in accordance to today's scripture, is it safe and beneficial to be a Christian? Is following Christ the prudent thing to do or not? What do you think? Take a moment and think about that. Is it safe to be a Christian? Is it beneficial to be a Christian? Is it the prudent thing to be? Well, in accordance to this scripture, it depends on who you ask. On one hand, we have today's psalm using images of God, calling him our refuge, our castle, our stronghold, our tower of strength. Those images of God are images of structures that will shield us from suffering. Like Martin Luther already wrote in one of his hymns, a mighty fortress, a mighty fortress is our God, a sword and shield victorious. He breaks the cruel oppressor's rod and wins salvation glorious. Though all the world with devils fill and threaten to devour us, we tremble not and trust God's will. They, the devils, cannot overpower us. Like I already said, on one hand, we have passages like today's psalm lifting up an image of God who can save, shield, and protect us. 
while on the other hand, we have scripture passages today where we encounter the Apostle Stephen. The Apostle who died the cruel death of a red martyr. Red stands for blood. He shed his blood for Christ. He died the cruel death of a red martyr, totally unprotected at the hands of an angry mob. And then again, we have the gospel reading that promises us that our ultimate destination in life is a home in heaven. A home, a place, or a spiritual condition that is devoid of suffering and struggle. Devoid of pain and conflict. A home that is a place of ultimate peace, love, and joy. But on the other hand, again, we have to remember that Jesus spoke those words about an ultimate home and about ultimate blessings on the same night before he died on that cross. Again, totally unprotected at the hands of an angry mob. The Apostle Stephen and our Lord, and Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ were both crucified. Just that Stephen refused to be crucified like his Lord. That would be too much of an honor he didn't deserve. And so he asked if he could be crucified upside down. So Stephen most likely died a more cruel death than Jesus himself, upside down. Dear friends, in the context of those contradictions, I'd like to ask you, how can it be that we have a God in today's scripture who is lifted up as our ultimate protector from all harm? A God who is depicted as a mighty fortress of safety and security, while yet at the same time the example of the Apostle Stephen is a great reminder that faithfulness or being loyal to Jesus often costs people everything. Literally everything. Sometimes even their own life. While I don't have an answer to those seemingly conflicting messages, today's scripture seems to remind us that in God, and that's the good news, in God, we are left completely vulnerable and at the same time entirely protected. To think about it, we are vulnerable and protected at the same time. For the world, that is a paradox, but not for the people of faith. I saw that so many times that people of faith endured great suffering while all was well with their souls. In the midst of their tribulations and hardship, they experienced 
the presence of our Lord and Savior. I must have forgotten it or lost it, <laughs> but an example of that is right now many Christians, many Lutherans suffer from not being together. They miss each other. They miss the Christian fellowship. They miss being in this place. And I cannot tell you how many times Alex or Lexi or I get an encouraging word telling us that all is well and that God is with us. And yes, all those people can't wait to come together again. God's grace 2,000 years ago was sufficient for the early church. It was God's grace that carried them through. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things have passed away and new things have come. Dear friends, today's scripture highlights people of great faith and blessing, who at the same time were tortured, mocked, beaten, imprisoned, stoned, cut into two, mistreated and homeless. And yet all these people, without exception, spoke of a deep-seated joy and peace that they have experienced in the midst of this. And all these people point to the eternal truth that, again, in Christ, we can experience a protection and we can have a sense of security that is much stronger than the stone walls of a castle. Like Martin Luther already knew, a mighty fortress, a mighty fortress is our God, a sword and shield victorious. He breaks the cruel oppressor's rod and wins Salvation glorious. And here comes the next verse, which is really incredible to me, in the context of, a, um, of COVID-19. And were they, Martin Luther say, says, and were they to take our house, goods, honor, child, or spouse, though life be wrenched away, they cannot win the day. The kingdom is ours forever. A mighty fortress is our God. Beautiful words. Today's lectionary reminds us that believing in God and following Christ doesn't protect us from hardship and tribulations. Often it's exactly the opposite. Many Christians are confronted with significant problems in their lives because of their relationships with Christ. Their new life in Christ does not only cost them physical and material abundance, but sometimes their very own life. And yet, Jesus promises us that in Christ we will experience life, eternal life, which is a life of love, joy, abundance, and peace. Now, maybe some 
healthcare workers who put their life uh, in danger because they take care of others are modern martyrs. All around the world, there are doctors and nurses who died because they served others. The bottom line today is that if we live our lives in Christ, then we are simultaneously protected and vulnerable. Protected and vulnerable. We are vulnerable because we are going to go where God goes. We are vulnerable because we are going to speak as God speaks. We are vulnerable because we are going to live where God lives. And most likely we are going to die the death that God dies. I'm speaking about the death on the cross. And yet we are safe and protected. Why? Because in Christ we are physically and spiritually hooked into a system that consistently pumps life, truth, peace, and joy into our bloodstream. And that's what will sustain us in all tribulations. So whenever you face some hardship or tribulations, we are called to put all our faith in God. Trust more in him. Believe more in his goodness and have faith in Christ only. After all, he is the only one who can make right every wrong that has been done to you. You don't have to defend yourself. Let God be your defender. And most important, remember that nothing, absolutely nothing can touch you if you love God above everything else. Why? Because God's love is so intoxicating, all-consuming, that no matter what happens to us or what anyone may do to us, we are inwardly undisturbed, remaining always in the same consciousness of divine love toward all. And by the way, when I wrote that, I really believed it. This morning was a great reminder that it's not always like this, so we have to grow into it. May God bless you all, and Mary, may God's love carry you through all trials and tribulations. Amen. We are going to sing um, a mighty fortress again. Number 504, verses 3 to 4. Oh
of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Thank you. We are going to pray. Please join us uh, in our prayers. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church the world and all who are in need. Build us up, Mothering God, as living stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen your church as it is sent forth to proclaim your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Humble us, Creator God, as part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the world you have made, including all people and all creatures in this world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Align our ways to your love, and compassion, O oh God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children. We pray for all mothers and thank you for them. We pray for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents. We pray for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Generous God, you call into your brilliant light all who have died. Give us faith to take hold of the promise of your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Join us for the Lord's Prayer, please. Our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come your, your will be done, done on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. At that point, uh, you may see on the screen uh, all the names.
take your time. All the names who are involved in our educational ministries, I'd like to give thanks to them. Um, those are Sunday school teachers, confirmation guides, uh, people who work in the background, um, who are maybe part of the educational boards, and who uh, give their lives to pass on our faith to the younger, younger generations. I wish that you would be here, but we couldn't be the church with, without them. And those are the true heroes of everyday life, of the everyday lives in the church. Thank you so much. I also would like to announce that uh, the Synod uh, does start, or did start, to think about strategies, how to reopen our churches. Uh, this Tuesday, the next Tuesday, we are going to uh, meet as a church council and we will start to think about how to be the church, how to reopen. We will probably go slowly. You know, it's an interesting time. We are called to care for one another. For, for, for one another. We are called to love one another and we want to be together, but sometimes God's love requires from us that we have to keep our neighbor safe. And so that's um, a contradiction, I think, that we find ourselves in, but we will find a way how to get through that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so sending him is, I know that my Redeemer lives, number 619. We are going to sing 1 to 2 and 7 to 8. And I'd like to give thanks to Alex and Caden and Nancy for providing that wonderful music. Thank you.
Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Mm-hmm. <laughs>